In this Volumes 2 video, we are going to demonstrate setting up the tow extractor point cloud task for defining our stockpile tow or uh, our stockpile base extent. So the first thing I've already done is loaded the LAS and raster layers. I'm displaying the uh, LAS in the uh, 10 surface point of view. I'm going to click on the point cloud task tab in the bottom left here to create a brand new point cloud task let's click on the gear icon here in the top right of that tab you can see our default uh, point cloud task here I'm going to click add to add a new point cloud task you see how we have a lot of different point cloud tasks to choose from a lot of different types uh, we're going to choose the tow extractor. For task name, I'm just going to repeat the task type name. I'm going to click OK. Click OK here. I'm going to click the drop down and navigate to the tow extractor point cloud ta task. can see by default the maximum size is set to 400. If you have bigger stockpiles, uh, you're not when you run this tow extractor, if you're not encapsulating the entire stockpile, you can increase this number. Uh, on the flip side, uh, if you have some smaller stockpiles or if you have some stockpiles next to some noisy uh, points, uh, you may want to decrease this so you're not including a lot of uh, extraneous uh, uh, points that you're not interested in for running the volume. For grid size, uh, we're going to use this little dropper function. You click on the dropper, it's just explaining what the grid size is going to be doing. I'm going to click yes. So you're going to see a crosshair uh, on the screen. You're going to you're going to left click on a representative area of the stockpiles. Just draw a little polygon, just left clicking and double left click to finish. It's going to change your grid size number if needed. Um, the default grid size number was fine for this data set. Uh, if you had less dense uh, data set, so uh, uh, more coarser spacing uh, between your points, uh, this grid size number is going to go up. So if you've done your, say you've done your uh, drone flight, uh, at a higher altitude, then this grid size will probably go up when you use the dropper function. Uh, uh, if you have flown lower, if you have a denser uh, data set, uh, this uh, number is going to decrease when you use the dropper. Uh, we're going to keep the minimum vertical change and grow shrink size settings default. Um, and uh, volumetric uh, uh, video number four in this series we're gonna go over uh, the overhead points function so uh, this would be if you're trying to exclude a conveyor or something like that automatically when you're defining your stockpile to. Uh, for output data set let's go ahead and click on the radio button here on the right let's I'm just left click inside this um, this field here under the file folder column. In the top right here you will see you can, you can insert the LP360 project path. I'm going to click on that. Uh, we can also create a new folder from here. So I'm going to call it volume. And I'm going to call, oh actually I'm going to call this 3D tow port slash tow and we're creating a shape file here so we need to put a dot shp on the end I'm gonna hit enter and uh, if you want to create just a single tow and you're just trying to do one stockpile and let's say you um, weren't happy the way the tow extractor that worked the first time for whatever reason if you click a, if you if you choose to run the tow extractor point clip task again, it's going to overwrite that initial tow you made. A lot of times we're going to be doing uh, mini stockpile tows, uh, so we want to change the output mode to append. Okay, 
And that way when we uh, click on a uh, or define a new stockpile toe of a different stockpile than the first one we've done and, and, and so on, it's going to save uh, the previous toes that we've made. So let's go ahead and hit close here. Just to show you uh, what that project path um, uh, is, is talking about, let's go to File, Project Settings. You can see here this is our project path. You can change this to whatever you want. It's just a nice feature uh, for keeping your data organized. You're not overriding a previous project or something like that. And this is all related to where that last data is coming from. So when we hit project path, uh, this is where it's going. And then I'm going to create that volume folder uh, that I already defined in that toe shape file uh, in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and click apply in the bottom left. Whenever you make a change to a point cloud task, uh, you, you have to uh, hit the apply button to confirm that change. Also, uh, for source points, uh, this data set, I'm just going to go ahead and click here in the middle top, show the uh, display by classification. You can see this is a unclassified data set. Um, we're going to go ahead and click on the display by elevation gradient again. Uh, so it all the points are in class uh, zero, created, never classified. Uh, so our source points don't matter too much here, but let's say uh, we had done some classification on this data set and we're run, wanting to run the toe extractor. We don't want to pick up those points that we may have classified out. We can click on source points here. And we're going to choose remove all classes. We're going to choose created never classified. So that's the only class that we're going to be running the point cloud task on. So let's say we classified some data, uh, vegetation, something like that, buildings, uh, cars, into another classification. Uh, we're not going to be uh, defining a stockpile toe based on those just to create never classified. It really doesn't matter too much because all our points are in one class, uh, but uh, let's just go ahead and set it up that way for future reference that way. We can use this toe extractor uh, for uh, unclassified uh, data sets. Go ahead and click apply. I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in on some stockpiles over here. Same ones we looked at in the previous exercise. As you notice in the previous exercise uh, we had some options for manually defining that stockpile toe. This point cloud task is going to do that for us. It's going to create a lot of vertices um, around the stockpile. So let's say the stockpile is on uneven ground. We're kind of worried, you know, if we're accurately defining that stockpile base, this point cloud task is great for um, creating a lot of vertices to more accurately reflect uh, that stockpile base of the ground around the stockpile. So let's go ahead and click uh, the um, execute point cloud task by point. It's very important to click on the slope of the stockpile. So let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. So I'm going to click on the slope. I had had some stockpiles I created previously. Let's go ahead and click on that again. Okay, so this is uh, really quickly um, define that stockpile extent. I'm just going to click on the slope of another stockpile. Because I have it set to a pin, it's going to um, allow me to do multiple stockpiles, not just one at a time. You know, it's not going to just save just one, it's going to save however many I create. This is a good example for what happens if you don't click on the slope. Let's just click on the top here and see what happens. This kind of has a flat. Notice that if I'm going to zoom in, the stockpile is kind of flat at the top and it's got a few um, bumps, kind of like little mini stockpiles on top of the main stockpile here. And so when I, I click on the top here, it's just going to lasso or 
to find the stockpile is one of those little bumps on the top. We don't want to do that. That's why it's really important when you're running this point cloud task to click on the slope of the stockpile. It prevents that from happening. So let's go ahead and click on the slope. You can see there we've defined the stockpile. That's So this is how you use the tow extractor. And the next, uh, the next training video, uh, volume three, we're going to go over setting up the volumetric analysis point cloud task. Uh, and running uh, volumes on these toes that we just created. One thing I'm going to do before we uh, exit this initial or this uh, this training video is I'm going to choose the select and edit features in our feature edit toolbar. Select that uh, uh, feature we created um, erroneously. I'm going to select delete selected fe uh, features our vertices, this little uh, red X right here at the top. It's going to ask me if I want to confirm that. I'm going to say yes. And to save our edits, uh, we're going to click the floppy disk and say yes. So we're going to go into the feature edit toolbar uh, more in depth than uh, another one of our training videos. Uh, but uh, that's how you would uh, delete a feature that you're not wanting to keep. Um, so this, uh, just a quick uh, demonstration of how that tow extractor point cloud task works.